each iteration, there were certain things I liked and certain things I didn't like, but only at this point do I feel like there's a wholeness about this piece where the composition is working in a way that I respond to it. Hey everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, which is about owning your authentic voice so that you can make compelling work and show up in the world as the artist that you want to be. So today we're talking bold moves in making your abstract oil paintings come to a place where it sings for you. I'm sure you understand what it's like to feel frustrated with each time you finish a painting session and you sort of feel like, okay, I think it's there. And then the next day you come in and you realize, no. So this painting on the wall has gone through many iterations. It's had many different um, stories and, and qualities about it that has brought it to where it is now. And I'm going to show you the process of each iteration and how I changed it and why I made some very drastic moves and very boldly took something that was working in many different ways and painted over the whole thing, which led me to where it is today. So um, I look forward to showing you that process and then we'll come back and I'll discuss the finished painting. This is Reckless Abandon in the painting that we're discussing today. And at the time, which is about a year ago, uh, it is now September, 2023, I was interested in working with a more muted color palette and to have a higher contrast of value from very, the lightest light to the darkest dark. And at this point, I was without an understanding of what I enjoyed about the painting, except for the colors and the value. So moving on from here, I ended up months later coming back to this painting. Actually, in my work with individual mentorship artists through the Whole Artist Mastery Mentorship Program, I use my paintings in progress as a way to show certain demonstrations. So in this particular case, I was showing how to create edges in shapes. And so the shapes showed up and color relationships. And I really enjoyed the, again, the high contrast between the dark and the white and the muted background and then this shock of yellow orange but ultimately felt like it was just a play on shapes without any meaning for me. And I say that, um, I stress the fact that it was without meaning for me because ultimately as the artist, you are the one who has to feel connected to the piece. Even though other people might be saying, oh my gosh, I really like it, I love it the way it is, don't touch it. If you feel differently, you have to follow your heart, which is what I did. And so this is the first bold move in going back into the painting in what I call Reckless Abandon Part Two, which is going back to phase one, except you know without um, any real expectation for what was going to happen. And at the same time, there's a lot already on the canvas, so or on the board, the panel, as this case may be. And so by going back in with the colors that I chose, it ended up showing up some really very intriguing textural um, passages in the painting that I wanted to build on. So, and I, I very much liked this color palette. So I started to work with this and honestly, um, it went in a direction, again, another bold move, without me really thinking about what I was doing. It was more of a feeling that I was following. And these shapes showed up, and I thought, wow, I really like this. 
for a few days or maybe for a few weeks. And then I kept looking at it and saying, yeah, I don't know, this shape feels like it's an area that's really fun and different, but it's unrelated to the rest of the painting. And whether you agree or disagree or whether I agree or disagree with that decision at the time, I went back in and changed it and covered over the whole thing again because I was having trouble hooking into what I really wanted to do. And what I really wanted to do was do something different. And what that is and was had yet to show up. So it's, again, going boldly back in, covering up things that you very much liked. I really liked this. I really liked the color combination here, but I felt as though the composition was disjointed. So obviously, or at least to me, it was obvious that the composition was still disjointed, but at this point I was feeling very frustrated and um, kind of dejected that, well, you know, I don't know what to do with this piece. Uh, I'm fairly certain many of you know what I'm talking about. So I just put it aside for several months and recently came back into it. And this is what showed up. And I started thinking, okay, all right, I have something I can work with here. But it still isn't working as a composition. Because of this being along the side here, uh, of the shape on the far right side and the bottom being kind of separated from the rest of the composition. And what does, you know, how do these things relate to each other? However, I was very much intrigued by the atmosphere that I was creating at this point between the texture and the tonal shifts. So I wanted to, to do something with that and so I sat for a while staring at the painting saying, okay, what could it be? And suddenly this little window here showed up in my, my, um, my awareness of the painting. And you know, this is where talking about the difference between looking at a painting and seeing what's there. And in this case, I think I went from looking at the painting to seeing something coming forward that was intriguing to me. And I thought, oh, this could end up being like this little window that you go way back into, surrounded by this much larger space. And so it went in this direction. And at this point, I thought, okay, now I feel as though there's a unity to the piece. There's a story quality for me that this is a place that I, it's inviting me to go in. I don't know what's back in here, but it's intriguing to me. And it's like a window into this little room in the much larger context of a larger room. And then I came back in the next day, which happened to be two days ago, and I thought, okay, well, I still very much like the piece, but it feels a little um, lacking in luminosity, which is something that's very important to me. So as it stands now, this is where it is. It was actually interesting for me to walk you through the changes in this painting, to see the radical shifts that I went through, and to realize that with each iteration, there were certain things I liked and certain things I didn't like, but only at this point do I feel like there's a wholeness about this piece where the composition is working in a way that I respond to it, that there's an emotional invitation into the piece, that this little window invites you to go to a world beyond in the context of a larger place that could both be interior, something that kind of matches a, a, a mood inside me, maybe inside you as well. And at the same time, this could be a room, it could be um, some kind of structure, 
or it could just be a, a, an ethereal um, quality atmosphere that's being held in a structure. So I invite you to create your own story here and to recognize how many times a painting needs to be um, boldly shifted to finally end up with something that feels emotionally engaging for you, intellectually um, engaging as well, through the physicality of using your paint and your tools. And the way to get there is by really going through these four phases of reckless abandon, critical analysis, integrating those two, and then coming to resolution. And if you would like to have a little more information about that, I actually have a free booklet on the website. You can put your email in, sign up, and download the PDF, and it will explain all of this in detail. And while you're there, go check out the online classes because they're designed to support your process, both in terms of developing your color understanding, practical application for color for painters, and also to help you connect into that reckless abandon voice inside yourself by learning how to use oil pastels. And then the last one is understanding your visual language because we all use line, color, shape, value, and texture differently, depending on what it is that we're trying to say in our work. So lots of things to support you on your journey. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.